Hello, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and welcome to the 36th episode of my Rails of Industry Minecraft series. In today's episode, I hope to build a bow that will help me defeat the Ender Dragon, and also to build an auto spawning mechanism for the Ender Dragon. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to build is a bow, and I want to do that through the mod Tinker's Construct. So let's take a look at actually what we need to build a bow. So actually, we should come over here to my Tinker's Construct area. And if we go over here and we look at what we need for a bow, and I think I'm going to use the long bow. We need two bow limbs, a large plate, and a bowstring. So let's uh, get started and uh, let's see what we should select for the uh, bow limbs. So there are lots of different things to choose from. And uh, basically, uh, one of the most important things that I'm looking for is the uh, draw speed. I want a better draw speed uh, and not a crappy draw, draw speed. So let's take a look at what we can accomplish. Uh, I know, I feel like wood is actually not too bad of a choice, but, uh, and I'm actually not 100% sure if the higher numbers are, I think the higher numbers are bad. And that seems to be the case anyways, because I would, I would definitely think that uh, wood would have a def would, a uh, wood bow limb would draw faster than say like an iron bow limb. So let's see if we can't find something that has a low draw speed, but a nice high durability. The red bow limb might not be too bad. And let's take a look at what that would entail. Uh, how do we make this stuff? Okay, so we would need to make this in an alloy smelter. And actually, that's not too bad. Silicon and redstone, let's actually do that. So silicon and redstone in equal parts. Uh, we will have to put this in the alloy smelter and then once we get the alloy out of the alloy smelter, we need to uh, put it into the uh, smelter right here. But while that's cooking up, let's go ahead and look at the other things we'll need. We will need a large plate and a bowstring. So the large plate is something for durability. So I just need to find something that has good durability. And let's see. Uh, I'm guessing I might go with something like Cobalt or Ardite. I think I'm going to go with Cobalt. Uh, I feel like the Lightweight modifier might help me. I'm not 100% sure on that. I could be completely off base. But Cobalt does have pretty good durability. So let's go ahead and grab some Cobalt. We should be able to grab 4 Cobalt Ore. Let's throw that in there. As well as our Red Alloy. And actually, I don't think that's what it's called. Redstone alloy, I think is what it's called. So let's throw some of these guys in here. And I should only need 10 of these. But just to be safe, I'm going to throw in 20. I think each bow limb requires 5 ingots of material. So let's take a look at the last thing. We need a bowstring. And for the bowstring, let's see what materials we can use here. Uh, Hemp fiber, vines, slime vine, slime vine. How is that even a thing? I'll probably just go ahead and use string. It looks like everything has a modifier of one, except for this sold bowstring. I'm, yeah, we're just, we're just gonna go ahead and grab some string, and that should be pretty easy to make. So let's grab our patterns. Uh, first off, we'll need to make all the patterns, except for the large plate, I guess. So the bowstring, that's that, and then the bow limbs. I think that is a bow limb. Yes. And I was wrong. The material cost is actually only three. I thought it was five. So let's go ahead and make some uh, parts here. Let's, uh, I think we should be able to make a bowstring that way. So that's pretty easy. And then a bow limb, we will need to make a pattern for this so that we can make a cast. But that should work pretty well. And then let's just go ahead and let's let's make our cast real fast. Uh, molten aluminum, there we go. Wait, what? Okay, so that uh, that was weird, but that works, whatever. I did not mean to do that. Oh, stop. Stop. 
Uh, I have this. Uh, I have a system set up to automatically make ender pearls, and that's uh, not really going to fly. Okay, so let's let's get rid of our blank casts. Uh, let's go ahead and put the gem cast back, and then let's get rid of this. Actually, I need this in here, derp, uh, because I need to cast up some of these guys. So let's go ahead and get that started. So I have the bowstring. I need to go ahead and make the large plate as well out of the cobalt. I should have a large, I don't have a large plate cast. Wow. Okay, so um, apparently I don't. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, get a large plate and make a cast for that. Oh, and my bow limb went down here. That's fine though. Okay, as soon as that is done setting up, we can go ahead and make the large stone plate cast. And then the large plate itself. Okay, so that dried awfully slow, but that's okay. So there's some aluminum brass, and then we can go ahead and put the cobalt down at the bottom so we that can so that we can pour it my goodness okay so in addition to the bow itself i will need to make some arrows and let's take a look at what it takes to make some arrows i do want to make tinker's construct arrows i think i'm just going to go with a manulin uh, arrow here and a manulin arrowhead uh, so we'll need an arrow shaft and fletching so let's go ahead and grab the things that we'll need for that. This is the arrow shaft pattern and then the fletching pattern. Uh, for the fletching, I think we can just grab some feathers and should be able to make a feather fletching like that. So that's easy. And then the arrow shaft, I think we'll have to... Okay, so I really thought I could go ahead and... Oh, I think I think maybe I have to use wood for this. Okay, yeah, let's... And you know what? Let's just go ahead and use the rest of the wood that we had there. So we have an arrow shaft. We have a fletching. Um, I think I need one more thing. I think I need the arrowhead. So let's go ahead and see if we can't make an arrowhead here. I think that will work. Uh, this is done there. So let's grab this and this as well. So now we have everything for the bow. Let's go ahead and make the arrowhead. Uh, I will need manulin, so I need cobalt and aridite. So let's grab that stuff. Let's just grab an ore. There we go. And uh, let's see here, that is good. So let's go ahead and make the bow because we have everything now. So bow limbs there, cobalt plate. Uh, let's see, draw speed, 0.55. I hope that's good. The durability seems to be all right. Um, let's call this something cool like Ender or Dragon Slayer. Let's go with that because that's what it's gonna be used for. And there we go. So it doesn't have the best durability, but that's okay. Uh, let's see what modifiers we can do. I think if I throw on some redstone, I can make it quicker. So let's try that. So yes, it looks like it's gonna be quicker. So 0 0.5 versus 0 0.55. So that does seem to be a decent amount quicker. So that's cool. Uh, let's go ahead and put away the redstone. We have that cast up. We're still waiting on the cobalt to cast up. I believe manulin is a pretty good arrowhead material. It's probably not the best, but it should get the job done. So let's pour that out. I think it takes two ingots. It looks like that is the case. So that's cool. I will be able to make one set of arrows here. And you'll see what I mean here in a second by set, because you don't get one arrow out of this. You actually get a number of arrows. So let's go ahead and throw everything in here. And this is actually 82 arrows, so that's cool. It does have the ecological trait, which means it will regenerate over time, as in the ammo amount. So that is also cool. Uh, so yeah, 
And one thing is I do want to put some nether quartz on this because that will aid in the amount of damage it does. So let's just grab a bunch of this stuff right here. And let's see how much we can attach. Um, it looks like that is all we can attach. So that's cool. Uh, it still has a really high attack number. So that is obviously what we want there. And let's go ahead and throw this stuff away. And maybe I can go outside and test this real fast. I'm not sure if there will be any any mobs around. Because I feel like it's probably daytime right now. But uh, if there aren't... You know what? There's probably some friendly mobs I can shoot somewhere. So, um, you know what? I'm not going to shoot the horses. I like horses. Uh, there's a slime over here. So let's get rid of that. And let's see what kind of droop it has. It does seem to have quite a bit of drop oh my goodness so uh okay so i i made a bad mistake here while making this bow the range multiplier is 0.4 that is terrible i'm probably gonna have to remake this bow because it's absolutely terrible uh okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm going to do a little research into what materials i should actually use for a bow because i chose very poorly last time and uh once i have uh that done i will be right back so i've come up with a material that will prove to be a much better bow limb and that is plastic there are a few other bow limb materials that uh, might be a little bit better than plastic but the thing is they're a little bit more expensive and i don't have them or i don't have very much of them but as we see, the draw speed is actually really, really good. It's even better than I had before, and the range multiplier is really nice as well. So that is cool. That should serve to be a really good material. So let's go ahead and try this again. Uh, this time, maybe we'll know what we're doing a little bit better. So the draw speed is fantastic. The durability is fantastic. The range multiplier looks to be fantastic. So... Uh, yeah, this should be a really good bow. So let's uh, take a look here. Uh, that'll speed it up just a little bit. So let's try that. Let's go ahead and take this thing out for a test drive. Uh, hopefully this will work out just a little bit better than the uh, one I had before. So let's take a look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This thing is awesome. So I made the right decision there. The old bow is complete trash. This bow is really, really good. So, yeah. Uh, bonus damage 2.5 um, this thing really shoots these arrows nice uh, in the future I may want to put lapis on the arrows I think the lapis needs to be on the arrows I'm not sure if it needs to be on the arrows or the bow to be honest for these tinkers uh, tinkers weapons but I'm glad that I have this done so the next thing I need to do is I need to get a I need to come up with a method to actually auto spawn the inner dragon to respawn the ender dragon you need end crystals so let's take a look at what it entails to make end crystals it takes glass panes nether stars and gas tears so gas tears actually are something that i can make uh, and i can make them from these catalyzing glands that i've been getting from creepers so that's cool i have pretty much an infinite supply of those and then the nether stars i have a lot of as well well a decent amount anyways so uh, what I'm going to do, uh, let's see, what, I'm not sure the best way to go about this because I don't want to use all my nether stars. Um, let's see, uh, I basically want an inventory that can hold a little bit of nether stars, but not like a lot. And I, a regular chest is way too much, and if I used an ender chest, that would be too much as well. Um, I think if I grab an ender chest and I should probably actually grab a couple of these and I will need to recode them. I need them to not be white, white, white because I'm already using that ender chest for TNT carts. So let's get some lapis because lapis is cheap and it serves as blue dye. So let's put these guys down. Right now they are TNT carts um, because that's what white, white, white is. Let's uh, recode these. So now there's nothing in these. And what I can do is I can set up an auto crafting mechanism for uh, to make the end crystals rather. 
So let's go ahead and let's come down here. Um, and let's just set it up over here somewhere. Let's put one of the chests here. Let's grab a crafter. And then let's grab a retriever if I have, I don't have those automated yet. I think if I use a retriever and let's go ahead and make this version as well as the best version because I think I might need the best version to set something up here, but I'm not 100% sure. So let's put those in there. Let's grab one of these retrievers Let's grab some item duct. And I should only need one as well as some flux duct. I shouldn't need very much of that. And then let's go ahead and set up the crafter right here. Let's go ahead and set up the item duct right here with the retriever here. Um, and let's see. Yes, this is exactly what I want here. This option right here. I need to tell it to only hold so many items in the inventory. It will be whitelisted. Um, okay, so we're not there yet. We don't have any of the... Okay, that'll work. That's fine. Uh, I need to get some items into here. So I need to get uh, gas tiers. And I need to grab a few of these first. I will need uh, glass panes. And then I will also need nether stars. Now for all of this, I will need a few cards. Uh, I need a crafting card. I need a capacity card. And I probably don't need these, but I'm going to grab them anyways. Acceleration cards just to speed things up a little bit. And then export bus. with some covered cable and I think it'll be easiest if I use blue here so let's grab the blue covered cable and that is more than enough so let's uh, run this up there like that let's get rid of that set up the export bus uh, actually I'm not going to set that up quite yet uh, let's go ahead and organize this so we can do something like this and actually I don't want to have very many nether stars in here so let's do that and then we can hit this remember button and now we can set up this uh, export bus. Yeah, that'll work. So everything needs to go in here. Uh, this should start exporting rather quickly. So we can get rid of that stuff for right now. And then let's set up a recipe. So actually I can't remember what the end crystals recipe is. So let's take a look. The gas tiers at the bottom, nether star in the middle, and then the rest of it is just glass. So that is cool, that's easy to remember. Let's hit apply. Okay, so that's still gonna soak up all my nether stars right now. But uh, let's go ahead and... You know what, let's turn this off for right now, just because I want to make sure that this is going to work. So we're gonna whitelist in crystals. We're going to have this thing be always on and hopefully we'll only pull eight into the uh, chest here. So that is exactly what happened. That is exactly what I want to see happen. So if I go ahead and increase the number, it, sh it shouldn't uh, change the behavior of this until the, this number right here drops below 35. Okay, so that is set up. I have the end crystals being auto-crafted. Uh, the last thing I will need to do is, uh, once I get to the end, I will need to have the end crystals be auto-placed in the correct locations. So let's work on that real fast. So let's get rid of the flux duct. I will need this. Let's grab some item duct. And let's grab a couple stacks just to be completely safe here. I want to grab a servo as well. And then I will need some redstone relays. So let's grab those. Um, and that's going to be more than I need, but that's okay. And then in addition to that, let's see, what else will I need? I will need uh, a button. Uh, that's pretty easy. Let's grab that. And then I will need 
something to place the end crystals and for that we're going to use uh, the phantom placers and I have these automated they are actually kind of a pain to craft but uh, let's go through the crafting recipe real fast and actually there are a lot of a lot of crafting uh, steps to this but to make the phantom placers you need a phantom face and an auto placer I've made auto placers in the past but I haven't made phantom faces yet on camera anyways uh, they take advanced coils and powered diamantine crystals, a uh, block of ender pearl, and a chest of some sort. I already have all of this all already. Uh, and then uh, in addition to the uh, phantom placers, we need uh, phantom boosters, which are ender casings, which are made like this, with uh, restoring crystals and diamantine crystals. Uh, I should have enough to make 12 of these. Oh, I do not. Actually, I bet I do. Um, if I go to my area where I set this up, to actually get this working, I had to set up this uh, contraption here and to make these uh, diamantine crystals. Um, if you want to know how to make these, I've made these in the past in some of my other series, but I didn't feel like burning half an episode uh, trying to get that all crafted so uh, I just did that off camera and I should have enough diamantine crystals now to make those phantom boosters so let's let's actually grab the phantom placers first I need four of these uh, looks like everything's good to go there so let's grab those I will need a phantom connector uh, and the phantom connector is uh, an item that uh, connects the phantom placers with a location so that they can place blocks in the lo in in a location that you want. Uh, the phantom placers are like the auto placers in that they can place blocks, but the location of the block that is placing does not have to be directly beside it. It can be in a nearby location. The phantom boosters that I will be using on the phantom placers kind of extend the range of the phantom placer i think the default range of the phantom placer is within three blocks of the placer itself it can place a block but with the phantom boosters i can extend that range considerably and that's what i'm going to be using so i think that's just about everything i need let's grab some structural duct just in case and let's grab more than that this stuff is cheap after all why not grab more than i need so that is cool. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my new rail line over to the uh, end portal. Uh, I have this set up. This is high speed rail. Uh, this makes the trip really, really quick. Uh, it is over a 1,200 block journey, and yet it only takes about a minute and 45 seconds for me to get there. So once I am to the end portal, I will be right back. And I am at the end portal. My track goes right up to it, so I'm just going to hop in and let's get started. Uh, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of tunneling near the center of the island here. Uh, and that is so that I can create an area underneath the uh, portal here uh, to actually... Uh, create my automation so let's dig down real fast and i should be able to go ahead and open okay so that is scary oh my goodness that is a lot of resin and stone okay so what direction do i need to go um we are directly to the south it looks like so let's dig down just a little bit more here and I think that'll be good so let's go ahead and dig over now and actually just for locations sake I am going to dig straight down from say right here uh, let's go a few blocks there. Let's go a few blocks from here. So that is good. Okay, so that's cool. And then if I dig block over, that should show up as well. So that is cool. 
Okay, so let's uh, widen this out just a little bit. And of course, resonant and stone doing its thing. Uh, that is basically it, just trying to teleport all these items around. That's what that noise is. Because that's what resonant and stone does. So, let's see here. Let's back away real fast. And then uh, I should be able to go ahead and set up my phantom placers. Uh, I do want to set them up right below the block I want to be uh, setting them up to. So actually, uh, in the past, I've had the best success actually setting them up a little bit offset here. So let's go ahead and set this one here. And then this one, these ones can be set up to say the east. And I did not, you know what, let's go ahead and drill down from here just to make this a little bit easier to get. So this one will be here. Um, and what I'm going to do with the phantom placers is we need to put these on top. And as you can see, the range now says six before it says three. Um, let's go ahead and, okay, so that should be enough range, I think. So let's just use two for right now on each one of these guys. Um, the reason I'm building them underneath the portal itself is that hopefully they will be safe when the ender dragon does its thing. Uh, she likes to swoop around and sometimes she'll go through some of the top layer of blocks when she perches near the end portal itself. And hopefully by putting these uh, far enough underground they won't be uh, destroyed by her when she does come down to perch. So the next thing I need to do is actually I need to grab this redstone torch that I grabbed. And I need to set these to pulse mode. I want them to only place when they are activated with a redstone pulse. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to grab this phantom connector. And I want to uh, I want to do some shift clicking. Blocks towards this connector. Okay, the connection is fine as working. So I have to... Um, do the location first so let's go ahead and okay so this is the location and then I need to shift click the uh, phantom placer so that's how I'm doing this no oh, whoops almost died not really and then I think this is the last one um, there we go and then shift click. Okay, so what I need to do with these guys is I need to have them place on the east side. So east, and I want this one to be east as well. And then these guys need to be on the... Uh, well, that doesn't seem right. Did I mess that up? Did I mess those up? I think I did. No, these need to be to the north. I don't know why I thought east. Okay, so north. And then these need to be to the west. These two need to be to the west. Okay, so west and west. Okay, so the next thing is I need to get the... Uh, and actually, I should have grabbed retrievers. And I, I need to go back and do that. So what I'm going to do right now is I need to grab four retrievers. Uh, I can't use this servo. I need to use retrievers instead. So I need to go back to my main base. So I'm going to do that real fast, and once I have uh, four retrievers, I will be back. So I'm back with my retrievers. So now what I need to do is let's go ahead and set up some uh, impulse item duct here. And uh, let's just make this pretty simple. We can connect it all up like this. And then what I need to do is I need to put a retriever on each one of these guys. So let's do that. And then what I need to do is let's go ahead and place down this chest, and it can be kind of anywhere. So let's go ahead and let's actually place it right here. I feel like that's a pretty lo good location. It is a central location after all. 
And so what I want to do is I'm going to grab these real fast. I want to uh, set this to whitelist. I want to set this to be on two, and I want it to be two for uh, that way. That way, each placer holds two of the items, but no more. And so set that to two. We need to set this to whitelist. And in crystal, let's turn this on. Uh, it should go ahead and grab two of these and be done. So that seems to be working, so that's cool. So now I can just go ahead and set up the rest of these guys. So let's uh, make sure to turn them on as well. And last one. Okay, so let's uh, double check everything. Let's make sure they all have two of these guys. So that seems to be good. And then I actually need to get the Phantom Placer's redstone signals. So let's go ahead and set that up as well. So uh, for this, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, it doesn't look the greatest, but that's okay. And then over here, we can just do something like this. Uh, for the redstone signal, we're going to use these uh, redstone relays. Let's go ahead and place them right here. And each one of these placers needs a redstone signal. We will set this these to be output on the red channel is fine. And then I need my button hooked up somewhere. So uh, it looks like my drop down point is over here. So let's go ahead and set up the uh, input right here. Um, and that'll need to be the button. So hopefully, in theory, what's going to happen is that when I hit that button, uh, it will start the spawn sequence for the ender dragon. Let's go ahead and get rid of this uh, dragon egg real fast. So it looks like it's gonna fall right here. Actually, if we dig one more over with my handy dandy thing, my handy dandy flux bore here, we can set up a little egg trap. By that, I mean a torch. Okay, so I need one more. There we go, broken egg. The, uh, I believe torches are, are the easiest way to break the eggs, so that is cool. Uh, and let's go ahead and hit this button. Let's see if this is going to work. Looks like it is, so that's cool. So I kind of thought it would. I've had some experience doing this in the past. Uh, looks like Ender Dragon's not very happy with me, but that's okay. Uh, this bow should be a little bit better than the bow I had before. So I'm I'm kind of hoping I can kill this Ender Dragon a little bit quicker than I killed the one. The first one. Okay, where'd she go? Oh my goodness, I think this bow is going to make things easy. Oh yeah, this bow's gonna make this fight really, really easy. I need to keep an eye on her though. I'm probably not even going to go after the end crystals that are caged. Uh, that's how I died last time. Being being dumb. But it looks like this thing fires so fast that uh, I don't have an issue with aim. Oh, don't turn. Yeah, this thing is crazy good. I don't feel like I'm getting quite the damage that I had before, and that's because of the enchants that I had on the the bow before. And I am actually a little bit worried I'm going to run out of arrows. I don't think I will, though. She is perched. Oh. Okay, so that worked. Should probably do this one as well because she is healing up when she's perched. I should dodge that. And there she goes. So that is fantastic. Uh, this auto spawning mechanism is something I will be using uh, 
in the future. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, and I think, I think my big finale for this series will be. Uh, I'm hoping that I can auto kill the Ender Dragon as well. So that's why I'm building this auto spawning mechanism today, uh, because I hope to be able to auto kill the Ender Dragon at the end of the series. So that's cool. So uh, let's see if the egg dropped in the same spot. I think it should have, um, and it should be. Um, actually, I don't know where it dropped. Because I don't think it dropped in the same spot. Let's take a gander. I actually don't know where it dropped. Because I didn't grab it. Oh, well. I don't really need it for anything. I have I don't know that I've ever... Oh, there it is. It's right here. Oh, so that's cool. <laughs> so, uh, anyways. I think that's a good wrapping up point for today's episode. In today's episode, first I made a really bad bow. And then I made this really good bow. Uh, this bow is quite awesome. I also made these arrows, and these arrows are pretty good as well. They do quite a bit of damage, but they don't do quite as much damage as the enchanted bow that I had before. Uh, but this bow is a lot quicker. It makes aiming so much easier against the Ender Dragon. And then in addition to uh, all that, I set up this auto spawning mechanism for the Ender Dragon. And it does look every like everything came away unscathed. The entire system is still intact. So that was uh, the goal with building it uh, a decent amount below the end portal here. So that she couldn't harm it in any way. So that's cool. I'm glad that, that worked out. So anyways, if you enjoyed today's episode, definitely give it a like. If you enjoy watching automation in modern Minecraft, such as this right here, definitely consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. Anyways, signing off, I am Minecraft Phenom08, and I will see you next time.